moving on, you know, we got the history. We have uh, a decent, a good physical on this patient as well. What kind of imaging are you are you getting for this guy as well? So for all my patients, I do a standing AP pelvis X-ray. Um, most of the time, we're getting some level of a frog leg lateral. But on the standing AP pelvis, kind of like you're uh, demonstrating, you're showing here on the uh, video for if you're watching the video. Um, you want to look at a couple things. You want to make sure one, it's a good image that you can see the entire pelvis. Uh, most of the time, I can see the lower part of the lumbar spine, so I'm looking for arthritis in the lumbar spine there as well, or any type of spine pathology. It might kind of cue me in there. And then for around the hip joint itself, I'm looking for the amount of joint space uh, between the femoral head and the acetabulum. Majority of the time, that's narrowed out superiorly, um, but sometimes it can be narrowed out inferiorly or, or medially. When it's more narrow superiorly, that's usually kind of a wear and tear type of situation. Uh, when it's more narrow uh, medially and inferiorly, I have to think of a uh, inflammatory condition like maybe rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis can have that as well. Um, I'm also looking for where their acetabulum is, uh, if they have a normal depth of their acetabulum or if they have a dysplastic type of situation where the hip tends to be, uh, hip center tends to be migrated a little bit proximally if they had hip dysplasia as a kid that uh, unfortunately nobody picked up. Um, and then I'm also getting usually a frog leg lateral to get a good angle at the uh, at the femoral neck, looking if there's anything going on uh, around the proximal femur as well. Um, so that's the majority of the uh, x-rays. And then for all my patients pre-op, I get a long leg standing alignment. So I get a uh, the ability to ac accurately measure a mechanical uh, alignment. Okay, and so with those images, you know, do does, does your staff, because I think this makes a difference too, does your staff know, you know, what you consider a good image? And, you know, are, are they pretty, I guess, is that something you had to coach your, sca your staff up on as well, just to make sure that you get the image that you want when these patients come into your clinic? Yeah, we, we've got uh, kind of rotate rotating x-ray text so you can always tell when they've changed because you don't get as good of images sometimes you just got to go over there and say hey this is what I want um I've got a couple of patients I've had and I just remember their names that had like perfect x-rays so I'll just pull up that x-ray for them and say hey this is exactly what I want if you have questions I write the name on a sticky note just pull up and compare that uh compare that x-ray but yeah, it's definitely a challenge um another x-ray we're starting to get is a uh, seated and sta standing uh, lateral x-ray uh, mostly looking at like pelvic incident sacral slope uh, things of that nature, kind of looking more at that hip spine relationship we were talking about earlier. Um, you know, as of now, I kind of feel like we're at our infancy of understanding the hip spine relationship from a standpoint of uh, instability or getting the cup in the ideal position. Um, and I feel eventually we're going to have be able to give ourselves some better guidelines of you know if this amount of pelvic distance change or this amount of sacral slope, then do this. But you know, right now it's just kind of one of those sort of figuring out if they're grouping them into either stiff. Uh, stiff pelvis or mobile pelvis right and so say we you, you know you have a patient that you know you saw them um, they have really bad arthritis you know they're really symptomatic they're trying non-operative management or conservative treatment it hasn't worked um, you've gotten your x-rays are so severe um, hip arthritis you know they're cleared you know they don't have any other medical problems or I guess if we can move on to pre-op planning what are some of the things that you know you want to be like on the the joint surgeon when they look at or when you guys look at uh an x-ray or ap pelvis of the hip what are some things that you want to start to think of when you're saying okay well this is kind of some of the things i have to think of as far as implant wise offset etc cetera, etc cetera. Oh, absolutely it's a lot of a lot of different things you start thinking about uh one of the first is as far as determining what type of implant you're going to use i look at the uh, geometry of the femur uh, if they're a door A femur, where it's a very, you know, narrow canal, um, there's certain implants that handle that better, that have a little bit longer stem that goes a little bit narrower. Uh, if they're a door C, like a really wide canal, then I start thinking more towards a cement uh, type situation, because I don't know that I'm going to be able to get that great a fixation uh, with press fit. I usually use press fit stems. Um, other things I'm looking at, like you mentioned, offset, I'm looking if they have dysplasia, anything like that, where I might want either a modular stem of some sort that would give me some rotational control or like a uh, Wagner cone type of stem that would give me rotational control as well. Um, offset, you know, you definitely want to recreate their native offset and their native leg length. Um, so I'm also kind of looking for, um, you know, what kind of stem is going to get me in that situation. Certain stems are better for certain conditions. So I think ideal situation is we want to be comfortable with a handful of different types of implants and be able to match whatever's best to the patient. I mean, one thing we didn't talk about, I guess, in history and physical, I forgot to mention, was I always want to ask the patients if they have any perceived leg length discrepancy. 
Um, and then in that long leg alignment film that we get, I always check measure for actual. Um, if they have a perceived leg length discrepancy, I've got different uh, wood blocks that are five centimeter or that are uh, five millimeters increments from five millimeters up to 2.5 uh, centimeters. That kind of try and figure out exactly how long they feel like they are. Excellent. So you know, just to kind of recap, you're talking about the door classification and that looks at the kind of the femoral shaft morphology and you're saying door A's, these are going to be patients that may, you may think of putting in a longer stem because they have a, you know, a more narrow canal versus door C's, maybe somebody that you may do a, you know, a, some type of cement, to, you know, a cemented uh, arthroplasty or cemented component. Um, and you also look at the, the dysplasia and to kind of determine um, how much offset you need or you want to kind of recreate their normal anatomy. So those are, I guess those are the big um, things that you think about when you're, when you're seeing these patients or when you're working them up preoperatively? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And since we mentioned those terms, can you, can you explain what offset is? Sure. So offset, and if people look at the video that got up, uh, offset is a measurement from the center of the femoral head going out laterally uh, until it intersects a line down the long axis of the femur. So basically it's how far the femur is laterally offset, that's the term, uh, from the center of the femoral head. Nice. And as far as, okay, so I guess we're, we're, we're about to run into like templating and things like that, which is fine. So as far as looking at offset, what are some of the things you can do to change, you know, change the offset or manipulate it, make it, make, decrease it or increase it when, you, when you're doing this preoperative uh, templating? And we also have the acetabular offset too, correct? Like the two. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah, so that's tabular side, it's, you know, how far you are. It all depends on where you medialize your cup, where you'd like to put your cup. Um, you know, if you decrease their offset, you do a couple of things that are all kind of negative. You decrease their, uh, their abductor uh, lever arm, uh, which functionally weakens their abductors. And then also you increase the likelihood of dislocation if you decrease their offset. Uh, the contrary to the, or the uh, counter to that is if you increase their offset too much, uh, they'll start having some greater trunk bursitis. Um, mm -hmm which you can usually treat with injections and things of that nature. In general, my pre preference is I'd rather deal with uh, increasing bursitis. somebody's offset a little bit, give them a little bit of bursitis, uh, than uh, increase risk of dislocation. And, and do you just measure that distance and then you get an implant that has that same amount, like that same distance as well? Like, is that how you're accounting for it uh, when you're, you know, choosing an implant? Uh, so what I'll usually do is I'll usually template um, and when I've template, I've got a couple of different uh, templates for implants. I don't have the uh, computerized stuff, the, the old school with the, uh, the kind of grease pencil type of deal. But so I'll put them up there and I'll try, see which size. So I'll template the uh, acetabular cup first, figure out about the size that I want that to be. Um, my goal with the acetabular cup is I want to medialize down to approximately the floor of the cotyloid fossa. So essentially the medial border of the teardrop. And I want it at about 40, 45 degrees of abduction. Um, and as far as sides, superior to inferior, I like to ream into the sclerotic bone superiorly a little bit. And I like to have the inferior border of my cup at or just below the bottom of the teardrop. Um, and then once I'm done with that, I start templating on the femoral side. So I put different implants in different sizes up and I adjust them based on where they sit in the femoral canal that they're gonna have good bony contact. Um, very few implants and usually don't wanna take away any cortical bone. So you kind of line up where they're going to sit based on that. And then once I figure out where they're sitting in the femur, then I look up to where they're sitting uh, as far as uh, the center rotation of the new stem relative to the femur. If it looks like I'm not getting the offset I need, I look at the high offset templates. Um, and if I'm still not getting the offset that I need, then I look at a different system. Okay. And I heard you call out some numbers that you were looking at as far as your cup and things like that. So what, what are we looking for? as far as, you know, inclination and antiversion or retroversion, what, what are we looking for as far as these parameters for the acetabulum cup? Sure. So the classic, everybody talks about the Lewinic, uh, you know, safe zone for acetabular cup placement. Um, that's a pretty good guideline overall. In general, I also try and match the patient's anatomy. Um, kind of figure that uh, whatever position God or whatever biology, you know, evolution put their hip in, if you put their hip in that same position, they could do pretty well. Uh, traditionally, Lunatic safe zone is about 45 degrees of invert of uh, inclination and about 15 to 20 degrees of uh, aniversion. Um, outside of that, 
and there's tolerances around that, but outside of that range, they're at higher risk of dislocation traditionally. Right. And you know what, and since we're talking about this, because honestly, it was something that was somewhat difficult for me to understand.